Welcome to the AU Abroad General Pre-Departure Orientation. First, congratulations on your decision to study abroad. This orientation is designed to make you aware of what you should be thinking about during each step of your study abroad experience. Before you leave, while you're traveling, when you arrive, and while you're abroad. Studying abroad is truly life-changing. The experiences you have will stay with you forever. In this pre-departure video, we will review important study abroad information and walk you through some vital steps you need to complete before going abroad. Before you leave, be sure to identify your goals, complete all paperwork, research your destination, plan for your health and well-being, organize your AU academics, and prepare your finances. We'll talk about each of these steps more in depth. We will start with a video to set the tone for the goal setting section. I've been exposed to languages since I was a kid. I was nine years old. My father once sent me these postcards from Shanghai with these Chinese characters. And as a Latino, this is new to me. And I stared at it for like an hour trying to understand them. And that would be the catalyst that would uh, changed my life once I went to college. By sophomore year of college, I knew I wanted to join the Foreign Service. I could speak Spanish and French, but I wanted an even bigger challenge, so I aimed for the most daunting yet critical of languages I could think of. Mandarin. China. Literally, on the other side of the globe, one of the most powerful economies in the world, this is perfect for me. And I immersed myself for a year, not as a tourist, but as a national security scholar. culture shock struck me. I insisted on living with the Chinese family just so I could adapt quicker to the social customs, but my family didn't speak a word of English, and my Chinese was at the level of a child, so apart from researching U.S.-China relations in English, I had to abandon all my other languages just so I could think and speak in Mandarin, and after months of laborious practice, I finally began to thrive. Outside the classroom, I took on an internship and taught English to understand the social issues and the education system. But I learned the most about China's history through traveling. The mystical Shaolin Temple to the Harbin Ice Festival and Chinese New Year in Beijing, they all nurtured my thrill and wanderlust. And I'm simultaneously learning how the Chinese interpret life, how they view my country and the common values that we share. I felt like a reporter for the New York Times 36-hour traveler's guide, you know, capturing this concrete compilation of different sites and activities from around the world. Toward the end of the semester, I become friends with this animated Chinese lady. And one day she asked me, Shang Zhuo, do you want to be on a TV show? And I'm stunned. I'm like, uh, yeah, of course, because I knew this was my opportunity. This was my test to show everything that I had learned on national television. And in a flash, the cameras are rolling, the lights are shining, and I'm the only American on a Chinese dating show. And there's no script, subtitles, or guidance, so... I just applied everything I learned and cherished the experience. And by the end of the show, my friends are texting me saying, yo, you have a fan base now on the Chinese version of Twitter. Like, come on, it was surreal. Going on a national stage in front of over a billion viewers, it just taught me to be fearless. And more importantly, deepen my passion for international relations. And I learned that when you lose yourself in this world, that's when you begin to find yourself. Now as I await to enroll in grad school as an aspiring diplomat, I'm part of an organization that gets to help students take advantage of their own study abroad opportunities. Study abroad is more than a class or a vacation. It's creating unforgettable relationships, getting outside of your comfort zone, and becoming a global citizen. And that feeling is just incredible. Before we begin, please take a few minutes to pause this video and complete the goals worksheet. Think about the personal, academic, and professional goals you have for your time abroad. Then, in the strategies area, write specific steps to achieve these goals. Once you've completed this worksheet, be sure to keep it in a spot where you can easily reference it. Evaluating where you are in terms of your goals while you're still abroad will help ensure that you stay on track in achieving them. Next, You'll need to complete all paperwork. Be prepared. There may be a lot of things to read and complete before you leave the United States. 
you'll need to pay your AU abroad deposit, research visa requirements and apply for one if necessary, and complete the pre-departure forms in your AU abroad portal. You may also need to complete additional forms for your specific program. Before leaving the U.S., you should begin researching the country and city where you will be studying. Read books, online newspapers, and contact program alumni to help you get a better idea about the new location. Don't just rely on guidebooks. While they can be helpful and a good starting point, look beyond them for your information. Researching your new country, city, and university before you leave the U.S. will help make it easier upon arrival. Another thing to consider before you leave is how to manage your health and well-being. We will go through a few items that will help you prepare for and navigate health issues you may encounter abroad. AU provides emergency medical, evacuation, and repatriation insurance when you study abroad on an AU-approved program. This policy will cover emergency medical situations, but not routine medical care such as physicals and non-emergency medical assistance. This policy will only cover you during the duration of the program and in the country of study. It will not cover you if you arrive early and stay after the program end date. It will also not cover you when you are outside of the host country on personal travel. It will not cover the loss of tuition in case you need to return home due to an emergency. Please consider obtaining tuition insurance for the semester you're abroad, even if you don't normally buy it. If you're on prescription medications, we recommend that you talk to your doctor and try to get enough medication to last the entire time you're abroad. If you cannot get a full semester supply to take with you, then you will need to look into the availability of your medication in the host country. Additionally, some programs have specific medical forms or immunization requirements. Be sure to review health guidelines and recommended vaccinations for your host country on the CDC website. Preparing for your sexual health before you leave the U.S. is also important. If you are taking birth control pills or other forms of contraception, talk with your physician about getting a supply to last the entire time that you are abroad. You should research and understand the cultural norms, laws, and attitudes relating to sex, relationships, and contraception in your host country. If sexually active, consider taking latex or polyurethane condoms with you, as the quality and availability varies greatly from country to country. There are a number of things you can do before you leave to stay informed about events in your study abroad destination. First, AU strongly advises that you register with WorldQ, AU Abroad's travel safety service. Instructions on how to register are in your AU Abroad portal. Before departure, all students should also register online with the U.S. State Department as a U.S. citizen traveling abroad. When registered with their Smart Traveler Enrollment Program, the State Department and the local U.S. Embassy will disseminate important information to you in the event of an emergency. The State Department also issues official travel warnings and alerts, and does so for a variety of reasons. Make sure you review the alerts and warnings issued by the State Department and educate yourself about the area in which you will be living. Make sure to take copies of all important travel documents like your passport and student visa. Keep these copies in a safe place when you arrive, and also leave a set of copies at home with someone you trust. You will receive full academic credit at AU for the semester abroad, but how this applies to your major and minor will vary. The grades you receive while studying abroad will be counted at AU as if you were studying here. They will be calculated into your GPA and appear on your transcript. How should you register for your semester abroad at AU? You will not register in your myau.american.edu portal. 
AU Abroad will register you. However, in order for us to do so, you will need to complete a form on your AU Abroad portal. This will let us know we can register you. Be prepared that you will likely need to complete a separate, program-specific registration process directly with your host institution. How do you know if classes abroad can count towards your major and or minor requirements? First, you should speak with the relevant academic counselors for your primary major, secondary major, and minor. He or she is the best qualified to advise you about how the courses will apply towards your degree. You may be able to get some idea about how the courses will be reflected on your AU transcript by looking at the AU Abroad Course Equivalency Database. To find the Course Equivalency Database, click on the Courses and Credits button on the AU Abroad website. Then, click on Course Equivalency Database. The Course Equivalency Database is a collection of courses that students from AU have taken in previous semesters abroad. Our partner universities offer many courses that do not yet have an equivalent, so students should not rely solely on this list when selecting courses. In addition, not all courses listed in the database are offered every term. If a course is not in the database, students can submit an online form to request that the course be equated. Can you get general education credit when you study abroad? Yes. You can take up to six general education credits abroad. To find out if a course can count for general education credit, look at the Course Equivalency Database. If the course can count toward general education credit, in the comments section it will say, Counts toward general education credit, and it will specify for which foundational area it counts. Can academic and physical disabilities be accommodated in foreign countries? Academic support and accommodations vary by site. If you receive accommodations here, you need to speak with a counselor at the Academic Support and Access Center. Make sure to fill out the form in your AU Abroad portal to let us know whether or not you currently receive accommodations and if you are requesting accommodations abroad. This information will only be shared with on-site staff responsible for arranging any necessary accommodations. Overseas institutions are not obligated to provide accommodations in the same way you experience them at AU. Filing your request early will assist AU Abroad in determining what options will be possible in your specific program. Students often worry about the cost of studying abroad. Although the cost can vary depending on how much you spend on travel or personal expenses, in most cases, students find studying abroad is comparable to what they would spend during a semester at AU in DC. All students pay full AU tuition during their semester or year abroad, as well as their study abroad program fee and mandatory student fees. Students will pay living expenses, such as housing and meals, either through their AU Abroad program fee or directly to the host institution or organization. American University students with financial aid will be able to utilize the reward package for the semester abroad, with the exception of work study. These items will continue to appear on the American University bill as usual. Financial aid is dispersed during the first week of classes at AU not when your program begins. If your program begins earlier than AU, be prepared to pay some of your expenses without your AU aid. Before you leave, call your bank and credit card companies to put an alert on your card that you will be abroad. Banks can disable your card if they notice a random international purchase. When on the phone with your bank, inquire about any international fees you will incur while using your bank account abroad. Before you leave, be sure to withdraw cash to have on you when you travel. This is important in case you are unable to access your money when you first arrive. To find the estimated cost of your program, 
Click on your program's page on the AU Abroad website. Then, click on the semester in which you plan to study abroad. Some programs will have a small AU Abroad fee and larger out-of-pocket expenses. Others will have a larger program fee that is more inclusive. In the case of this program, the fee includes housing, academic excursions, and much more. There are specific things you should think about while traveling, such as packing and communication. It is good to pack lightly, but appropriately. Make sure to check the local weather in your host country beforehand to help decide what to pack. A couple of key items that students find helpful to bring with them from the U.S. are their laptops with travel insurance coverage and electric plug adapters. Don't forget to leave room in your luggage for souvenirs and other items you will buy while abroad. Most returning students say they overpack. Check luggage regulations as they do vary depending on the airline you use. Items you should include in your carry-on are your host university acceptance letter, passport, airline ticket and proof of return, arrival instructions, prescriptions and medications, essential toiletries, and a change of clothes. Carry all medication in your carry-on luggage and keep all medications in their original bottles. Familiarize yourself with the international dialing procedures of your host country ahead of time. Let family know your contact information as soon as you have it. It's a good idea to set a specific time to check in with your family once you arrive. They may be worried if you don't contact them immediately when your plane lands, even though it may not be practical. Also consider how the frequency in which you contact home may affect your cultural immersion. Limiting the time spent on social media and other outlets will help you engage more with the local culture. Stay in touch with us. We can be found on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hashtag AU Abroad in your photos. Each semester we run a photo contest for returning students. So be sure to think about all the pictures you're taking that you can submit to us upon your return. Once you arrive at your destination, it is important to think about your responsibilities, safety, as well as how to access money. Remember that you are representing the USA, AU, and the host institution. Local laws do apply to you, and you must also adhere to the AU Student Code of Conduct as a registered AU Abroad student. We expect that you will be a good representative of the U.S. and of American University during your travels. Once you leave the U.S., you will no longer be subject to U.S. governance, but instead will be subject to the laws of your host country. It's your responsibility to educate yourself regarding the local laws and customs that will affect your everyday life abroad. Always let someone know, such as your parents, friends, or on-site contact, when you will be traveling. Someone should always know where you are and how to get in contact with you if something were to happen. Use alcohol responsibly and follow all safety advice. Carry emergency contact numbers and obey local laws. Carry identification and let people know where you are. Obey the AU Student Code of Conduct, keep money safe and secure, and if you normally use prescription medication, continue to take it. Remember, bad things can happen anywhere, but it is important to always be alert and to use common sense. Don't get high, go to jail, or get drunk. Only consume alcohol in a responsible and culturally appropriate manner, and absolutely do not use any illegal drugs. Don't be oblivious. And while we know you may think it's exciting, don't go to demonstrations or protests, as they could turn violent. 
Don't carry your passport every day or do something irresponsible that causes you to go to the hospital. While this all may seem like obvious advice, please think about how these safety tips while going out in your new city. When traveling, we recommend you take money in a combination of forms such as cash to handle some initial purchases, as well as a credit card or debit card. As long as you've checked with your bank, you should be able to take out cash from an ATM in the airport upon arrival in your host country. Check currency conversion rates and have emergency funds available. Most students don't open a local bank account while studying abroad. During the program, think about and be prepared for your academics, any emergencies, and your cultural adjustment. Know that the academic culture overseas will be different than what you're used to. Culture permeates the academic environment. Some institutions will have large, lecture-style classrooms where you will not be able to ask questions. These sessions may be less discussion-based. Assessment styles vary. For example, in some countries, final grades are comprised of only one or two exams or assignments. Be prepared for a different environment. It's all part of learning what another culture is about. If you decide while abroad that you wish to take a class pass-fail, please note the following. You cannot take the course pass-fail at your host institution. You must take the course for a grade there. The course can be converted to pass-fail back at AU. Regular AU pass-fail rules apply. You must request the pass-fail within the first eight weeks of the program start date not AU's class schedule. The request can be made online, but please note that any course that is equivalent to an SIS course will not be able to be taken as pass-fail. While you're abroad, you will be required to report your courses. You will receive an email reminder from AU. If you do not see this email, know that reporting courses is completed through the same location as the course equivalency database. The system will only allow you to report courses that already have an equivalency. If any of the courses you are taking have not been equated, you will have to request equivalency. In order to report your courses, you will select them from the drop-down menus in the reporting tool. After you have entered all of your courses, Make sure you check the box at the bottom of the screen to confirm that you have reported all the courses that you are taking. Emergencies can happen abroad. It is important to know what resources are available in case of an emergency. Your first point of contact should always be on-site program staff. Please keep their contact details with you at all times. Your AU Abroad Advisor is another important contact. There are other important contacts at AU who can help in the event of an emergency. OASIS has confidential advocates for sexual assault. They can help you without having to report to AU or other authorities. Laws, perceptions, and reactions to dating violence differ across countries. OASIS is available for support and can help you identify the experience. There are many other non-confidential resources at AU who can help you. Their information is listed here. Be sure to take note of this contact information and keep it with you. The State Department and the local U.S. Embassy can disseminate important information to you in the event of an emergency. The State Department issues official travel warnings and alerts, and does so for a variety of reasons. Additionally, they can help you obtain medical care, offer information about the criminal justice system, and find English-speaking advocates. Culture shock will occur, even if you're prepared for it. You will have highs and lows when you're in your new city. This is perfectly normal. 
and the other international students are going through it too. Know that it is not the host culture's fault, and it will get easier as time goes on. When you first arrive, it's quite common to feel excited about being in a new place. But soon, many students begin to feel out of sync. Symptoms of culture shock may not appear right away. They often set in a couple of weeks after arrival, when the initial excitement of being somewhere new has worn off. Symptoms of culture shock vary, but some common ones you may experience are feeling sad or lonely, being angry or irritated, suffering homesickness, sleep problems, or simply feeling a bit lost. Students should be prepared to relearn basic tasks such as taking the bus, shopping for groceries, or making simple financial transactions. Even such things as grocery shopping can seem daunting. When you expect something to be somewhere, such as eggs in the refrigerated section, and they aren't there, it can be confusing. There is a lot you can do to offset culture shock. Try making friends with locals, connecting with other Americans, or writing in a journal. Study abroad alumni can be a valuable resource for suggestions and coping strategies when facing adjustment issues and culture shock. All of these things can help you make the low points easier. The more effort you put in, the more you get out of it. But if adjustment does become difficult, contact a professional at AU or the host institution to get the help you need. So what do former students say has helped them in adapting to the new surroundings? They agree on these things. Staying in the host city more, spending less time on the computer and social media, finding ways to meet locals, and using your language skills, no matter how little you have. It can be scary, but these things will help you make the most of your experience. Remember, your study abroad experience is what you make of it. After going through adjustments to adapt to your host country's culture, returning home might be a challenge. You have grown and changed during your time abroad. This process is called reverse culture shock and is similar to adjusting to life in a new country. Students returning from abroad often find it helpful to connect with international students at AU and seek out activities related to their host country. Here are some final things to think about. Our photo contest, staying in touch with AU abroad, and your final pre-departure assessment. As we've previously mentioned, we hold a photo contest each semester. You can win up to $100 in Eagle Bucks, so keep your eye out for great shots. One of these photos could be yours someday. Now, you'll need to test your knowledge of the pre-departure information from this presentation. This mandatory assessment is in your AU Abroad portal now. You must take it before the deadline. Have a nice trip and bon voyage.